We're going to draw something called a bond dipole. And a bond dipole, what does that mean to you? Bond dipole. Two. Two poles. Maybe a positive and a negative side. Isn't that what a pole? Maybe. A north and a south. Okay, bond dipoles are going to be drawn like this. It's going to be an arrow with a positive on one end of the arrow. Um, each bond in a structure will have a bond dipole on it. A single bond has one bond dipole. A double bond has one bond dipole. A triple bond has one bond dipole. Okay, so whether it's single, double, or triple, you're gonna have one arrow on it. Um, how do you know wh which direction to draw it? Bond dipoles will always point toward the more electronegative atom. They always point toward the more electronegative atom. So if you'll recall, in the last chapter when we did all those periodic trends, one of the trends we talked about was electronegativity. Electronegativity is defined as the ability of an atom in a bond to attract electrons to itself. The ability of an atom in a bond to attract electrons to itself. Do y'all recall, do you recall the trend for electronegativity? Uh-huh. Yes, electronegativity increases left to right and bottom to top. Increases, I'm going to write L to R for left to right, and it also increases bottom to top. Okay, we remember that from the last chapters. What's the most electronegative element? Fluorine. Because we don't consider noble gases, why not? They're inert. They don't bond to things, right? So fluorine's the most electronegative element. Now, let's go look at the structures that we've drawn, and let me show you how to do a bond dipole. Let's go back um, to the first one, to carbon tetrachloride. Can I switch slides, y'all? we good? Okay. Here's our carbon tetrachloride structure. And I told you, when you draw a bond dipole, you're going to draw it for each bond. Well, all four of these bonds are the same. It's between a carbon and a chlorine. Look at the periodic table. Think about your trend. Carbon, chlorine, which one's more electronegative? Chlorine, right? If it increases bottom to top and left to right, then by just looking at the periodic table, does it make sense to y'all that chlorine's more electronegative than carbon? Okay, and I said on a bond dipole, we said we always draw it pointing towards the more electronegative atom. So do you see that we've got to draw it for each bond, and I'm going to draw it pointing towards, towards a chlorine, because chlorine's more electronegative. Do you see that? It doesn't matter if you do it on the top or the bottom. You just squeeze it in wherever it works. Okay, so do you likewise see that since this one has four bonds, that I'm going to draw one for each bond, and that's the bond dipoles on carbon tetrachloride. Okay. The next one that we drew was water. I'm going to have a bond dipole on each bond. Hydrogen, oxygen, which one's more electronegative? Oxygen. So is this what you would draw for water? Does that make sense to you? To draw that. Okay, let me pause here and point something out to you. In both of the ones we just drew, y'all, when we did carbon tetrachloride, 
look at the arrows, they're pointing to the atom that has all the dots on it. You see that? In water, it points to the atom that has all the dots on it. Okay, so that's something, there's a reason for that. The one with all the dots is usually the more electronegative one. Not always. The next one was carbon dioxide. Can you draw the dipole on that one? Uh-huh, towards the oxygen. Like so, right? And then for nitrogen. Those are the exact same atom. There's no bond dipole. Does, does one of those nitrogens want electrons more than the other one? No, since they're the exact same atom, they both have the same electronegativity, so guess what? The, they're going to share those electrons equally because they're the exact same atom.